news in the comedy podcasting space um unfortunate news actually um regarding somebody that i'm a big fan of actually um andrew santino from the bad friends podcast and also from the whiskey ginger podcast his own little show um has announced uh via his show with um dr drew or oh, yeah the yeah, whiskey ginger show where his guest was dr drew he announced that unfortunately he also has caught covid and from what he said on his show it seemed that there's been a few comics out there who have caught COVID, but have been quite quiet about it. Now I'm assuming most of it has to do with the negative response online in general from people going out, trying to make money and just existing in the world, right? And then catching COVID, there doesn't seem to be a lot of sympathy for these people, especially comedians who are, you know, were kind of, I think in the arts might have been the first people pushing things and being a bit cheeky and putting on shows outside when they probably shouldn't have put on shows. We got, it doesn't matter. And then like, you know, none better example or there was not a worse example of that than the fire and the kid boys when it brendan shop and brian callan prior to all the allegations decided to go out on a tour and you know um there's no real problem with people going out and trying to earn some money or just trying to go out to connect with the fans but obviously you know prior to them going out on their tour if you listen to the fine kid you know that they were huge COVID deniers right they were really annoyed by it which makes sense considering they live in LA and Gavin Newsom was probably one of the staunchest um, people kind of against opening up the economy in any kind of shape or form he was kind of one of the alarmists who was very against any kind of reopening of the economy people getting back to normal so you can understand the frustration day to day for some of these comedians who essentially required getting on stage was part of their kind of everyday life to suddenly be denied of that kind of was really shocked to the system but again it's no excuse for how brian Callan and brendan shaw behaved when it came to covid and then naturally as the universe would kind of permit they went out to texas decided to do a show um inadvisedly did meet and greets hugging fans not wearing a mask and guess what boom they get covid and you know no sympathy was shown to them they got absolutely ridiculed online brendan shaw got pretty battered on his comments the canon was being quite cocky about it at the beginning then he called it and he got really ill and then i guess that kind of humbled him to some certain extent but he handled it really poorly they didn't you know there was no real humility about the issue and if anything they it sort of reinf for some reason i don't know why for covid deniers whenever they get it it seems like they just double down or whatever um ill-advised ill-informed nonsensical opinion they have regarding coronavirus it doesn't seem to open their eyes to be like you know actually it's a serious issue if i just put a mask on maybe i would have avoided it but on the flip side someone like an andrew santino dealt with it in a perfect way he announced it really clear um kind of gave a synopsis about what happened and his kind of feelings behind it and i'm going to play a bit of the clip of him announcing that he got covid here and we'll talk about it on the other side <clears throat> well, you don't, don't actually don't. just for actually, me um so this is your second time here on the whist ginge sadly we can't be together because of what's going on and uh i think i'll jump right into it what's going on is uh i have covid19 i got coronavirus fantastic sadly um i, I don't know about sadly you've done pretty well with it now i'm jealous well here's the thing there's so much to unpack here so much to talk about but the bummer for me was I'm not one of these dudes that's like, fuck masks and, right. you know, who gives a shit. I was generally, for what it's worth, super safe or about as safe as you could be. Limited contact with people. Yeah. Um, it just, it was pretty remarkable how how easily it was caught. It was caught, you know, and not to name names, but a friend of a friend. We were having beers outside watching football. How, couple, how close? How, what was the, how many foot distance? This is kind of interesting. The crazy part is it was at a rectangular table. I was at the head and he was sitting down, kind of down the line, so to speak. So I would say, not to sound annoying, but five, five to six feet. I mean, he wasn't that close to me. But oddly enough, you know, yeah, we but spent six enough time feet, together. I mean, we're, there's a lot, of com a lot of data now about aerosols, aerosols. It's maybe further than droplets, blah, blah, blah. Right. And if you spend any time at a distance from someone now were you in the sun were you outdoors outside yeah in the sun or in the shade in the shade see that's interesting Th theoretically the uv would have prevented that kind of aerosolized spread but uh you know even even so outdoors should not be a kind of environment where you'd see aerosol spread yeah but you know are you sure he didn't come up and bring you a beer or something he I mean, well, we were talking before sitting down outside together, but we had masks on. Um, 
and we were probably within a couple of feet of each other, but we were all wearing masks because we were waiting to get sat on the patio. So again, like I said, he mentioned it, and he dealt with it in a really mature way. Again, I'm not comparing the entire clip, but definitely check out the show. It's basically Ginger episode number 103. And just a stark contrast in kind of the response was kind of illuminating. I mean, it really goes to show just how much of a, just how much of a um, bad position I guess uh, T Fight K boys put themselves in, right? When they decided to go on the defensive about them getting caught. Co- they, they went on the defensive regarding the lockdowns in the first place. Super, super, you know, and really on the fringe, you know, side of things before we even had the science to really kind of support any argument on either side of things. Because I was quite neutral regarding the coronavirus lockdowns. But of course, as we got more insights now, it's kind of been, you know, everyone sort of kind of accepts that maybe the excessive lockdowns we had in the beginning were a little bit excessive. There maybe should have been a bit more of a clear of instructions as to how we could go about combating this as a you know wherever even if you live in europe or you live in the u.s you would know that we probably went a bit over the top with the whole lockdown sort of thing but unfortunately that we weren't necessarily maybe aware or made um it wasn't made clear to us the severity of the situation and what was actually needed in order to kind of get it under some level of control or some level of semblance of you know normality and now mostly i guess in most parts of europe we're in a point where you know we have the second spike places in the u.s are blowing up all over the place kids are going back to university going back to college so the spread is just upticking so things are going to basically go from bad to worse especially now we're heading into flu season so um that was obviously an issue but back then we didn't know all this stuff right so they were kind of against lockdowns and being all conspiratorial about stuff and just generally being dicks about stuff and not really being sensitive to their audience and essentially they completely turned off everybody it turned of course you know unfortunately well in the u.s covid is now a very hot button political issue which it really shouldn't but it is now so if you come out of it in the beginning you know basically spouting your anti-lockdown rhetoric without any findings or without any kind of intelligent you know point of view with any sort of nuanced take on it you're just essentially ranting and raving about the lockdowns because you want to get back on stage and perform it kind of comes across a bit disgusting right it comes across a bit bad and of course when you suddenly get it no one's gonna have any sympathy from you so you can definitely see the contrast and response and again um especially with andrew santino my heart goes out to him because he was you know for the most part talking about covid pretty seriously he wasn't one of these people that were kind of you know um anti-maskers or kind of pretending to be a macho guy not wearing one like a brendan was in the beginning and now he's got his bloody bandana on and something all the time you know and he's turned that into a fashion item i'm sure he's probably gonna end up selling bandanas himself in it uh what thick boy was it thick boy bike club bandanas i'm sure they'll be coming out soon very very soon even though he was against wearing face masks which would be um ironic to say the least um but yeah my heart goes out to andrew santino in it he was looking forward to doing a pretty big tour i think with christa christa stefana christa christa stuff is that christa stefana or christa stefana I forgot his name. Anyway, the guy from History Ahinas, they were meant to do a tour together, um, a little kind of car show thingy that kind of, you know, that Burt Crash is doing at the moment. So for that to kind of end now, especially, you know, considering what's going on, considering the limited amount of stage time these guys get looking forward to it and then suddenly getting COVID when you're trying to be safe, when you're trying to do all the right things, sitting, you know, socially distancing yourself, sitting outside, all those good stuff, and then suddenly you still end up getting it. It must be a real bitter pill to swallow, but hey, um, at least he's on the other side at least it hasn't kind of you know necessarily knocked him for six he's mentioned already that he lost a sense of smell and taste which you know is probably a frightening experience to go through but this is better than it's better than some people's um situation so i think there's some positives to be had there but again what a contrast in the response regarding that um than what the t5k guy has done in the beginning what a contrast but again get well soon to him and hopefully we have we hopefully we don't hear no more stories about people in comedy catching covid because they're performing in front of large audiences you don't know where those guys are going back to um it'll be just it'll be such a shame to see you know um an industry that is already on its on its knees considering corona and considering the lack of clubs that are open to suddenly be tarred with a brush that they're responsible for sort of super spreader events that'll be horrible to see no one wants to see that so again if you're going to go out to a show be safe you know be vigilant and obviously make sure the venue is taking stuff seriously and obviously to comedians too don't be negligent don't just put on a show and perform just because you want to perform and pick up a check try and be as involved as you can in making sure the space to take all necessary precautions because the last thing that industry needs the same thing like you know the dj world that i'm in is a really bad event to go down where tons of people test positive and essentially you kind of leave a bit of a black mark on your industry that negatively affects it when things start to reopen later on in the future but again what do i know